I was listening to a lot of early Rod Stewart lately. Now, Rod Stewart gets a lot of slack because of how his career was in the late 70s and 80s and 90s. You mean flack? Flack is what I mean. The mask. It messes things up. And I realized that Rod Stewart is the musical equivalent of the movie director Rob Reiner. Both of them starred out in an ensemble project, All in the Family for One, The Small Faces for the Other. They both start out their solo career, hit after hit, little bits of perfection. They can hop around from genre to genre, and still their style fits right in. And then something happens, and they just drop right off. They just spend decades in mediocrity. You can't remember the last Rod Stewart album. You can't remember the last Rob Reiner movie. They're the same person. Huh. Whenever I look at Rob Reiner, I always think that he's wondering if someone wants his body or if they <laughs> think he's sexy and then he wants them to let him know. Exactly. And whenever I see Rod Stewart, I want to say meathead. <laughs> <laughs> Time for unboxing. Unboxing. Look at those boxes. Look at those boxes. Unboxing is an adjunct to Welcome to the Basement, where we open our mail and we thank our donors. People go to welcometothebasementshow.com and contribute. People like these people. Shelby, Justine, RPC Services, Adam, William, Reed, Patrick, Jed, Christopher, Grant, Jeff, Lindsay, Carelock Services, Eric, Abraham, Andrea, Luke, Brian, David, Gill, Thomas, Kieran, Catherine, Stephanie, Nathan, Harrison, Stephen, B.A., Mikey D., Brett, and Kai. The rest of our donors later in the show. Thank you. This is a Harold Lloyd Speedy oh. postcard from Brian in Asheville. I caught up with Melville's Le Samurai. I wondered if you've seen it and what you thought. We watched that movie together. We didn't think much. Yeah, my hopes are pretty high for that movie, and it did not achieve those hopes. Maybe I should go back and watch it again because I had expectations that it was going to be action. Maybe that wasn't the movie to watch with your buddy. No. Maybe that's one to watch by yourself. But Brian thought it was great. Okay. Great. Okay, this is Seattle Apocalypse, and it's from Robert, who says, Love the show. I never get tired of watching these. Thanks for all the laughs. Hey, you're welcome for all the laughs. Here is a map of the Canadian regions from Sean. Just in case you need to know the location of significant placer gold deposits. Oh. Now I do. Oh. Stay well. Thank you, Sean. If uh, this show ever goes belly up, I'm off to find some gold. Cape Breton. In Nova Scotia? Sydney, Nova Scotia. Yeah. Ooh, I can't read that name. Tern? Rairn? Farm? Is your name Farm? I can't read your name. I'm sorry. I recently saw the movie Helvetica, a documentary about typography. I never thought that fonts could be that fascinating. Are there any movies that taught you a lot about something mundane that you never thought about before? I can think of documentaries that taught me a lot about a very specific subject, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it mundane, like Ken Burns' Prohibition documentary. I learned more about Prohibition than I ever thought <laughs> I would. Prohibition's not mundane. No, That's no, an era not. of American history. Do well, you know? the answer is yes. We just can't think of the specifics of that yes right now. Okay. Nova Scotia is nothing but beautiful, or at least it was 30 years ago when I went there. You realize how much Maine isn't trying. It is now time to answer some viewer questions. Rebels at Cloud Nine. I've always been curious when at the end of the viewing you mentioned trivia about the films. When are you looking up this trivia? I thought that you might do it beforehand, but wouldn't that just give away key plot points to the film? Uh, yes and no. I look up information about the movies, but I don't look at the plot summaries. Sometimes I do encounter spoilers in that, but yeah, that happens, you know. But basically I check uh, Wikipedia and the trivia section of IMDb regarding the particular film. That gives me enough facts for the intro. I usually like to have three bits of information at least. IMDb is good because they separate the spoilery ones down at the bottom. Sometimes they do. Donnie Hood writes, What is the worst movie you have seen so far on Welcome to the Basement? Most all of the bad movies have something going for it. Just the bonkers factor of Miami Connection or the Apple. As much as I like to get down on the weekend, it's still something that I'm happy I saw because I took a lot away from it. There's only two movies I think I've watched on the show where I just thought, this has no redeemable qualities. One is Dungeons and Dragons. 
because they clearly don't understand the game at all, or movie making, or storytelling, or how to use Jeremy Irons. The worst movie we saw on the show, as far as I'm concerned, because it sucked all the joy out of my body, The Phantom Toll Booth. Oh, yeah. That was another movie like Polar Express, which demanded you thought it was magical, and it gave you no magic at all. movie is rated g so it's appropriate for all the g's and the homies oh totes totes man no they pull the princess leia he hears a weird noise outside totes a goose every robert zemeckis steven spielberg or joe dante film that takes place in the 50s or 60s has to have a model plane hanging from a child's <laughs> ceiling it's the Polar Sex Express, the <laughs> raunchiest train in all the land. Free liquor awaits you. There's an open bar. We don't card on the Polar Express. A present. Let's smash it. How does he look like a kid and an old man at the same time? I believe. In coyotes, in time as an abstract. <laughs> Okay, let's open some packages. Ooh, yeah, I forgot that's what we do on this show. This is from Amy in Deland, Florida. Oh boy. Someone took advantage of Amazon's wrapping services. Oh. Oh. Hmm. This is for you. Okay. This is for you. So do you want to trade? Um, sure. Okay. We're switching them up. Yeah. Matt and Tona, here is a painting of Ernesto. I did... For you, too. I know it has been a long time, but he is forever part of the show. I pulled this image from the catnip video. That never fails to make me laugh. Amy, let's check. Oh. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at that. <sighs> oh, that's beautiful. It really is. I'm going to come in here. i got to show them eventually. <laughs> <laughs> We get to Look see at that. first. Look at that. That's really nice. Thank you so much. That is uh, very good. And I, I'm going to say her name because I've got her business card here. Watercolor Botanicals. Amy Aronson. So check that out. All right. This is from Grace. Greetings, basement dwellers. I was the one who sent the Something Wicked This Way Comes DVD. Thank you. I love that movie. Forgot to put my name on there. It was so cool to see it on the show. Happy holidays and hugs all around. That's how hugs work. All around. Well, it's a book. It's Ray Bradbury, Something Wicked This Way Comes. Nice. There's the man himself on the back. I did not listen to any records this week. I hope to next time. Uh, so we're going to hear about the rest of our donors. Chris, Michael, Laura, JP, Anthony, Caitlin, Maurizio, Jonathan, Andrew, Corey, Kendall, Robert, Amy, Joaka Record and Things, John, Tabitha, Jenny, Gray, Mark, Daniel, Danielle, Paul, Jorge, Stephen, Krista, Vincent, Sarah, Vance, Derek, and Jacob. I salute you. Two more packages. Let's do it. Okay. This is from Bethany. Greetings from Michigan. I've been a fan since Nanook and of Blame Society since a friend introduced me to the Chad Vader series. Enclosed is my favorite album from my favorite band. Sadly, my favorite song has a skip due to my cat jumping on the table right on top of it as I was about to play test it. Oh, darn it. That's too bad. Cecil, when he was a kitten, he jumped on my turntable once. I was not happy with him. If you like the unconventional sound, I included a flow chart. It recommends which of their albums to listen to next, based on your feelings on this one. Huh. Also, I imagine Matt already has one, but just in case either of you can use it, I'm sending a record brush. I used it to tidy up the vinyl. I do have a record brush, but thank you. I could use a record brush. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Vinyl brush for you. Thank you. The band is called Me Without You. The album is Brother Sister. I've never heard of this band. No, I haven't either. And they have all of these albums. <laughs> Let me see if I recognize anything. That is indeed a flowchart. Look at that. Flowchart. Our first flowchart. I like the song about the spiders. Then you go to that one. <laughs> the dark and more aggressive songs. You go to that one. More of this, but a little softer. You go to that one. That's cute. That's it's No, I, I should More than cute. It's really... Very clever. This one came with a note, too. Dear Madden Craig, I was elated to see that you guys received two copies of the last record I sent you, The Rain Parade's Emergency Third Rail Power Trip, which we both really enjoyed. Quick note on that period. 
Craig was spot on when citing the Bengals as being part of the Paisley Underground. Another record worth digging into in the genre is the Dream Syndicates, Days of Wine and Roses. The Rain Parade was founded in part by David Roback. Roback passed away in February of this year. He is more... That's, a, that's the right time to go out in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> He is more widely known for his work with Hope Sandoval and the Project Mazy Star. Or Mazzy Star. I've never known how, how to pronounce it, but I do know that it's a sign of Generation X making out. It was great hearing that both of you got to enjoy the rain parade, so I decided to replicate that happy accident and send two copies of this new record. This record is definitely very fitting for the basement, as it features David Lynch's go-to maestro, Angelo Badalamente. On this... Teams up with Tim Booth of the band James. Oh, whose bed is on fire with passionate love. Hope you enjoy Booth and the Bad Angel. Huh, there we go. Battle of Mente. Looks like the mafia vampire there. <laughs> <laughs> we got so many surprises today. Things unexpected. Things that are very touching. And uh, we appreciate all that you do and all that you send in. And we appreciate you watching. We want to remind you leave a comment about the video. If you have a question for one of us, if you have a scenic suggestion, if you just want to say hi, leave more comments. Yes. And now I'm going to recommend some content from our back catalog for you to watch or rewatch, and I'm going to recommend the Christmas in the Basement playlist. There's a button for that at the end of the video. You can click on it and watch all of our Christmas episodes from the years past. Not all of them are Christmas movies. Some of them are family-oriented movies that we just lumped in with Christmas. So check that out, and now you can check out this. This. You don't want to be bamboozled. You don't want to be let down to Primrose Bad. You don't want to be caught or duped. Have the wall pulled over your eyes. Excuse me, I need to consult my thesaurus if I want to continue this list.